So hi, y'all. Welcome to my talk, uh, Navigating Paved Paths with an Inner Source CI-CD Capability Map. So as we go on, we'll unpack exactly what that means. My name is David Custer. I am a Senior Principal Software Engineer at Comcast, and I'm in the Delivery Engineering and Developer Experience Organization. Uh, I've helped run our internal CI-CD platform for the past two, coming up on uh, three years now. And that experience has inspired a lot of, of this talk of trying to get these practices and these capabilities out into the larger organization. So for our agenda, we've got a lot I'm trying to, to fit in today, um, but we are gonna talk about capability maps, um, what they are, how we can apply them to CI CD, then how we can take that and make it actionable, the different ways to navigate the map and how we can use that to find uh, and create paved paths. We'll also talk about inner source and then how we can potentially automate some of the things that we're gonna see. So I have a quick uh, example capability map here. And typically these are applied in the context of an organization. The idea is to break down visually the abilities that are needed to run the business. And it will usually detail what the organization does and not how it does it. And then hopefully it can make it easier to understand the different parts of the business. And this is a high level breakdown um, and then we can go further into each of these capabilities and, and break it down even further. So in this case, we can see the sub capabilities that we have under the higher level capabilities. That is what goes into performing each of these business functions. And looking at a breakdown like this, it may help not only with identifying um, what's happening, but also maybe, you know, if we're intimately familiar with this business, we can kind of just glance at this and sort of say, well, this part's going well and this part, you know, maybe not so well. So now we'll take that same idea and apply it to CI-CD. And before we do, starting at kind of just a very high level, often we see CI-CD talked about this way, right? We have code commit, we have deploy, we have this thing in between that is CI-CD, right? It kind, of, it kind of just happens, but we're really gonna drill into that and, and break it down. Before we do that, one caveat I wanna call out is the way we've been thinking about this is that the artifact is the handoff between CI and CD, right? Um, the CI part of the pipeline is all about creating the best artifact that it can, and the CD part is about taking that artifact and doing things with it. And I've seen this mentioned in some other presentations. Hopefully this isn't too, too crazy of an idea. Um, so here's our top level CI capabilities. Um, as I go into this and at the various levels, uh, I wanna stress this isn't meant to be gospel by any means. This is just our, our current thinking on it. So we start with in-memory tests. We have uh, for sub-capabilities, unit tests and linting, both at the code and infrastructure as code level. Uh, we have mutation tests, fuzz tests, consumer-driven contract tests. For, anal or, sorry, yes, for analysis, um, you know, primarily static code analysis. There's static code analysis. There's some other ones in here as well. Um, we have various types of security scans. And one thing to note with this is that many of these could be considered static code analysis, but we wanted to call out security as kind of its own capability, right? And that just, you know, stresses the way that we've, we've broken this down. And then finally, we're gonna move on to our artifact management. We're gonna determine the next version number, generate the artifact, store it somewhere, manage the life cycle of it, sign it, create a software bill of materials. And this is a lot of CI capabilities. Um, I have a various version of this talk where I kind of go in and break down all of these, but that takes, you know, an hour plus. Um, so today we're kind of just giving it a you know, much higher level. Um, also the graph is diagram here is partly because I love graph is, but also it's meant to kind of stress the, the sort of whiteboarding nature of this, right? Like I'm skipping all the debate that has gone into, you know, what this breakdown, how we've kind of, we've gotten to this point. And I'm gonna assume for this audience, uh, maybe not everybody, but for a lot of you, a lot of this will be fairly familiar and hopefully you're already kind of starting to think about how you might do this differently. I'm gonna jump into CD. So we have config management. We've, um, we're storing our secrets, our configuration. We have infrastructure as code. We pick our tool. We're storing the state somewhere. We stand up our infrastructure. For deployments, we are promoting our artifact from one environment to the next, right? We build it once, we deploy it many times. Um, we pick a deployment strategy, et cetera, et cetera. One thing I wanna call out here, and this again kind of drives home the nature of the capability aspect, is that for rollbacks, we've split it into two. So the idea is that for automated rollbacks, a human is watching the deployment and deciding, uh, looking at the metrics, deciding is this going well or not, do I want to roll it back? And then you know, clicks a button or does whatever to make the rollback then happen in an automated fashion. Whereas an automatic rollback would be a human's not involved at all, right? It would be more of a continuous deployment scenario where you commit your code, you go to lunch, you come back later, you find out that a, that a rollback has happened. 
So we have verification steps. Um, this is the various kinds of tests that we would run. Again, once we've uh, we're in a deployed environment, this is sort of a counterpart to the in-memory test we saw before, where we're in the context of a CI system. And note that this is a little bit different. It doesn't specify we deploy to dev, we do this test, we deploy to stage, we do this test, right? This is, these are the capabilities that we have of the various types of tests that we do. Then for change management, if we have a um, change control board internally in the org, how we deal with that process, also our automated release notes. And then finally, we do call out release and specifically getting into production. Um, if we, and then also if we do any sort of progressive deploys, for instance, with um, feature flags, dark deploys, that sort of thing. So again, this is a lot of CI capability or CD capabilities. Um, we heard earlier in the talk from Adobe about the cognitive load, right? This is a lot of cognitive load. And to make it worse, I'm gonna show you both of these at the same time. So don't try to squint <laughs> and, and read all of these, um, but I just want you to see them kind of laid out you know, next to each other. And then also the reminder that that artifact is the handoff kind of between, between these two. So at this point, you may be feeling like, I don't even wanna do CI CD anymore, right? It's, it's too much. So we'll talk about you know, how maybe having this map that I'm gonna show makes that um, easier, hopefully, to deal with with all of this. So to start, the first thing we're gonna do is make it actionable. So we have an HTML view in our documentation. We've basically kind of taken all of our whiteboarding and, and formalized it a little bit more and turned it into a static, um, you know, static documentation. And again, it's similar to what we saw before, right? We have CI on the left and CD on the right. And then you can click into each one of these and read more about it, right? There's documentation accompanying each of these, each of these capabilities. Uh, there's a write-up for each, and it becomes kind of a, a self-service way to learn about each one of them. So for that, uh, the write-up, we call it a capability template. It's formatted in essentially the same way. So first, what is this thing, right? Let's define what this capability is. Then why would you want to use it? When would you potentially not want to use it? Or what are the possible gotchas that you need to watch out for, right? For instance, as your code size increases, you know, the, the time it takes to do this scan may also increase linearly, so it's going to slow down your whole pipeline, for instance. How do you actually do it, right? Here's code that you can copy into your um, pipeline. Here's links to, you know, documentation, blog posts, that sort of thing. Also, what other teams are using it? And this isn't gonna be exhaustive, certainly, but this is an inner source map. Teams can add themselves to the list. And this becomes a way to find out, maybe there's somebody on my same floor, I don't realize they're doing all these same things, right? It can foster some good lunchtime conversation and hear about their uh, experience and perspective. Also, what is this build on where to go next? So the idea would be, hey, if I'm looking at this capability, there's some foundational ones I potentially need to look at first. After I've, I've built this one, kind of here's, here's where I go next. This becomes a bit of a choose your own adventure way to, to navigate through the map. And then also please contribute. And I'll talk more about the inner source uh, aspects a little bit later. So now we've got the map. We have a write-up that details each capability, uh, provides understanding and implementation details. But what else can we do to make this simpler? So just a reminder on, on the view. Um, we don't necessarily want people to kind of click in and just start you know, stumbling their way through it necessarily. So the first thing we're gonna do is indicate visually where we have paved paths or paved path tooling. And the idea is, is here is anywhere you see a gold star that you know there's strong guidance around how to um, do this capability up to prescribing a particular tool. And the gold stars aren't how we have this in our internal documentation, but for my level of PowerPoint artistry, this is, you know, this is what we've got today. And before I go into this next section, I'm gonna kind of just shrink the map a little bit. Um, so you can think about this as being the same as what we you know, just saw, but just again, to visualize it, it's gonna be uh, a little bit smaller. And next, we're gonna look at different ways to do uh, what I'm calling slicing the map. And the first way is to slice by standardization. And in this, uh, again, this is an example, it's not specific to Comcast how we have this, this internally. But in this view, what we're seeing here in green is where we have organizational standards around these certain capabilities, right? Either you should be doing this thing um, or you, you know, potentially have to be, uh, as well as guidance on how to go about achieving it. In the yellow, it indicates that we have teams that do it, but it's not necessarily a standard thing, right? So just picking linting is kind of that first example. Some teams may be doing linting, some aren't. For the ones that are doing linting, they may not be using the same tool, even in the context of the same programming language, for instance. 
So in essence, like we don't have, we haven't settled on a paved path in that level. And then in what's in kind of the, the red or salmon color, it's essentially saying, hey, this is maybe something we're looking into. Maybe there's a few teams looking at it as far as we know internally. Maybe there aren't any teams that are, are using these practices. Um, you know, and that might be okay for these. Some of them we, we may not care about. Um, potentially, you know, it's, it's either a direction to go further. Maybe we even want to pull them off the map. And in my mind, this becomes an org-centric view. So you're looking at it from the perspective of the organization, and you're saying, here's where we have standards, and here's where we don't. Here's where we can help you, and here's where you're, you're kind of on your own or where you're going to get less help. And that might be fine, um, but I'm not sure this really tells teams where to start and kind of where to go next. So instead, we're going to slice it next by maturity levels, and perhaps confusingly, I've used the same colors and just reversed them. Um, another way to potentially think about this is sort of a gradient, right, light blue to dark blue or, or something like that. Um, but in this case, if you or your team is new to CICD, uh, it's essentially saying you can start at the basic levels, right, get those things in place, then move on to the intermediate levels, then, you know, when you have those in place sufficiently, look, start to look at what's in more of these advanced, advanced practices. And it's also important to note that not all teams, not all pipelines would need to go all the way, right? Um, so you probably want some sort of a rubric to indicate, you know, or, or coaching perhaps, something, you know, along these lines, right, to, to know how far to go. And in my mind, this becomes a more team-centric view, right? So instead we were saying, here's where we can help you and here's where we can't. Now it's saying, as a team, here's where to start and here's how to progress. And there's various other ways we could do this. I'm only going to show one more. Um, and that's taking it a step further and making it a team-specific view. So in this case, the map becomes much more dynamic. Uh, so whereas before we had maybe static you know, documentation in HTML, we would now maybe move it into more of a web app. And it shows how, let's say, my team in particular is doing. And again, this is a, an example. This is a... Uh, imaginary team that I've invented as a, as a straw man in this, in this scenario. But if we've gone through this, we've done sort of an evaluation process, and we say, this is my team in particular, well, our infrastructure is code and our deployment strategy, we're doing really well. But in our CI side, right, our uh, unit testing, our code coverage, our static code analysis, mm, not, maybe not so great, right? So we're probably, when we have deploys, they're very advanced, but we're probably doing a lot of kind of unnecessary deploys because there's things we're not catching in the unit test level, right, that we could, we could shift that testing left and eliminate a lot of the deployments that we're doing. And by having this, again, this visualization, just at a glance, we can kind of see that, you know, very quickly. Okay. So let's move on to inner source. So in my mind, these are inner source maps because they're org specific. So we could start from a shared industry starting point. Um, what we saw earlier in the, the Google Dora um, uh, presentation is probably a good place to, to look for some of this. Um, but because CIC is central to how we deliver software and the software we're delivering is central to our business, the capabilities that we care about are going to end up being specific to our org, and we're invariably going to customize the map to our org's perspective. And then with what we value and what we want to focus on, um, we slice the map based on you know, the behaviors that, that we want to drive. And with the write-ups that we have internally, right, on the, the how-to of here's how you do this thing, right, this is going to be very internal, custom to our org. Here's code you use. Here's links to internal URLs, that sort of thing. And then also we can use this to harness inner source for a, a flywheel effect, right? We want that sort of knowledge in, knowledge out, push and pull of a flywheel. Um, we want developers to take the knowledge from the map, use it to build solutions, take the learnings from that, feed it back into the map. And doing so, that can help provide feedback on what we've got so far, can help also help uh, find new uh, paved paths. Um, yeah. Okay. So if I haven't lost everybody at this point, we're going to talk about uh, going to automating some of these things based on what we've seen so far. So if you remember on the write-up for each capability and the template, it had that how-to section. 
And our CI platform is Concourse, which may not have the best statement about reusability, um, but I think that it applies regardless. And so as we went through this and we're starting to do these implementations, uh, if, you know, how do you do this in your pipeline, right? It becomes a lot of copy this, YAML, copy this, copy this, right? And that's a lot of YAML. So the question became, could we make this better? So at Comcast, we have thousands of developers, tens of thousands of pipelines. Um, so if we have a new capability that we wanna roll out, does that mean that every team has to find out about it? They have to understand what this is. They have to prioritize it, schedule it, put it in their backlog. They have to actually implement it and then test it. And if so, then trying to do this again across thousands of teams potentially could be a, we'll say a multi-quarter effort. So instead, what if we could treat the code as data, we could analyze the pipelines programmatically, we can manipulate the pipelines programmatically, take the output of that programmatic manipulation of pipelines and send it as pull requests back to the original teams and then track those pull requests across the org, right? Have they been merged, are they closed, are they still open? Um, and as we can see from what's in parentheses here, all of the building blocks for that are already in place. So if we can do that, that means that when we have a new capability to roll out, teams still have to understand it sufficiently, right? That they're still responsible for their pipelines, so we don't want them to merge things if they don't understand what, what we're sending them in a pull request. Um, as part of that, they may still have to test it. But we don't have to market it, um, we don't have to get them to schedule it, hopefully they don't have to do much of any implementation work. Um, and then we could theoretically take what was previously, you know, a, a multi-quarter effort and uh, bring it down to maybe, you know, potentially weeks. And from a developer experience standpoint, this meets developers where they are, right? We're just sending them pull requests. It leaves autonomy in the hands of the teams themselves, right? If what we're sending doesn't actually work, they don't like it, right? They're free to close it, right? And one of the expressions that I like to use in the context of developer experience is we wanna do things for developers, not do things to developers. So not just, hey, we stuck this thing in your pipeline, surprise, sorry we broke it right before your big deployment, right? It's here's a pull request, you merge it when you're, when you're ready. And this is different than a, a centralized platform that kind of just does CI CD, right? If you can say, hey, just give us your pipeline and we will do it all for you, then some of this doesn't apply. And we can have kind of a separate debate about the meaning of DevOps and, and all that, but that's not, that's not our environment. So this is still work in progress on our side. I don't have screenshots to show, um, but there are some implementation challenges doing this. First of all, YAML is lossy. Um, comments get dropped usually as soon as you parse YAML. Anchors and aliases get interesting. If you reformat YAML, you know, or if, you, if you take something in, send it back out, it's reformatted completely. The diff is not readable from a, a human standpoint. As well, when you're dealing with handwritten pipelines, it's all the kind of classic challenges of unstructured data. That being said, there are at least a couple items here that are, are kind of prior art operating in this space that I, that I know about. Um, open Rewrite and Grit both have open source software with companies behind them uh, selling services. So in summary, we want to define the CI-CD capabilities that matter, um, that our org cares about, and how we break down the problem of CI-CD. We wanna document how to do them in the context of our organization and we wanna slice the map in a way that drives the behavior that we want. The map can be a single starting point to discover all of this information, and it lets us harness the knowledge that's already in our org and feed it back into the map. And then finally, we can investigate treating code as data, potentially automate the rollout of new capabilities and updates to existing capabilities. So, Thank you very much. I'm in the CDF Slack. Uh, you can also find me on GitHub and Twitter. It will always be Twitter to me. Um, I'd, I'd love to continue the conversation. Um, also, I'm the one up here giving this talk, but I wanna give a shout out to many of my colleagues at Comcast and again, especially the Delivery Engineering and Developer Experience Organization that have helped develop a lot of this and also the security org that has, uh, some of the things they're doing has inspired some of this as well. So again, thank you very much. Since it's lunchtime, I don't know if there's a, a protocol around this. I would say let's do a hallway conversation, and if people want to go to lunch, they can. But all right. All right.